Hi, I'm Conrad Fisher, and this is Routine Miracles. And I am here with a guy who has clearly seen the 1960s movie Fantastic Voyage maybe one too many times. Dr. Sandeep Mangla. What's your proper title here, Dr. Mangla? Well, I'm the director of uh, interventional neuroradiology. Someone came in here with a stroke, mm -hmm. a clot, an embolus, a mm -hmm. clot of blood that flies off to the brain. Mm -hmm. that if they came in here in a timely fashion, mm -hmm. within one or two or three hours, mm -hmm. that you could conceivably go in there and snatch, actually go in and retrieve the clot mm -hmm. and pull it out. Okay. Actually coil it up with, what's it called, the, uh, the appropriate name, Mercy catheter? Yeah, the Mercy retriever, yes. And the Mercy stands for mechanical embolus removal in cerebral ischemia. Wow. Right. It's probably got about a 50 to 70 percent success rate where we didn't have many options before in uh, removing a, uh, a critical blockage uh, in one of the arteries in the brain uh, that is causing someone a, uh, a very severe and devastating stroke. The other thing is I also is uh, uh, very impressed by the idea that clot-busting drugs, thrombolytics, mm -hmm. clot-buster drugs mm -hmm. that normally we only give intravenously and can mm -hmm. cause side effects, that you are actually able to deliver those clot-busting drugs right into the brain with a catheter right in the brain? Yeah, that's true. Acute stroke is one of the biggest challenges that we face, I, I think, in healthcare. Uh, it's the third leading killer in, in America, the second leading killer in the world. And, uh, and up until the last decade or so, we didn't have many options. We could uh, give intravenous thrombolysis, and we still do that. It's a standard of care uh, for patients that come in in a timely fashion within three hours. Mm -hmm. But most patients, probably 95% of patients come in later than that, right. and uh, and they come in uh, because they don't feel the symptoms. That's, yeah, exactly. In other words, chest pain wakes you up in the middle of the night because it hurts. Right. But uh, stroke presents with weakness or numbness. Mm -hmm. That's true, and it's and I think that that's one of the problems. You don't get woken up, so you you know out of your sleep, so you end up sleeping through your stroke, and and often we Ooh. don't really know when your stroke started, so you're not eligible for many treatments. Uh, that's one of the problems. Yeah, I mean, the other problem is that. People don't really know what the symptoms of a stroke are, as you say. Numbness or speech difficulty or uh, minor paralysis, which is often the warning sign that a stroke's coming on, often get uh, attributed to you know, being tired, to you know, maybe my arm falling asleep. Right. And, and so you don't come right away. You, you kind of wait, and then only when it becomes a full-blown, well, oh, now I'm paralyzed, do you come. And that often uh, it can be late. And I think that the interventional options uh, are in a prolonged window. We can do them up to six hours. Uh, we're FDA approved out to eight hours with several different tools. And we have an opportunity you know, to uh, reverse the, the blockage, remove the blockage, and restore blood flow to the brain. There's also the penumbra. The penumbra catheter, yeah, is, a, is essentially, it's like a vacuum cleaner. It's a suction catheter. They developed a little wire with a bead on it, uh, which uh, essentially unplugs the catheter. Because the problem we were having with suction catheters before was that they would get plugged up with the clot, we can start to vacuum up clots in, in the brain Vacuuming arteries. up clots out of my brain, basking them out in locally administered thrombolytics. That's right. Just imagine what they'll be in two to four more years. I think, it's, I think, it, I think it's an exciting time in medicine. I think that we have a lot of options. I think it's, it's a matter of putting these options uh, you know, in developing the infrastructure and the resources and, and publicizing them to the patients to get to the uh, hospital as quickly as possible to avail themselves. Of the, of the latest uh, in, in therapeutic strategies. I think that there is a tremendous opportunity for progress uh, in many cases, and I think, I, I think you're, you know, uh, Dr. Fisher, are really uh, in you doing a great call job. Me in, Conrad. Conrad, and doing a great okay. job in, in learning about all these things, and, and I think that it's just a matter of getting everybody to know about them and, and to take advantage of it. Terrific. Thanks so much for telling us about this.